Okay, now we are going to uh, talk about a very interesting topic here. Um, why don't we just put the title here? Uh, what is so we're gonna talk transfer functions. Let's go call it concept. Yeah. So let's go over here and propose that we that we use the example that we were doing before, but um, like that, and then we produce. Let's see. Okay. So this is a resistive element, a capacitor, obviously, and an inductor. So this has the value <coughs> of R. This thing has the value of C. And normally this, we put L for the inductors. It's obvious that you have in here the current here. This is the current I. Yeah. And uh, I, I am going to write down our objective in here. Why don't we say objective? Say so we are interested. Interested in a relation. Between an output and the input. So you could say in this case, well, let me put it in here. In this case, the voltage of the capacitor is, is our output is picked at random, you know, doesn't and the, um, the voltage is our input. Okay. So as we have done it with other things, uh, right now let's use the block diagram approach to begin with. Later on we'll use the automated approach. So that's the first thing that we're going to do is to write the equations of motion, uh, in this case the equations of the system. So equations of system. You would see that the voltage, isn't it true that the voltage B is equal to the voltage of the resistor plus the voltage of the capacitor plus the voltage of the inductor, right? This is, um, you know, uh, the summation of the voltages, summation of voltages around a lip. Uh, around the loop. Okay. Now it is true that the voltage of the uh, uh, R is times I times R, right, isn't it? The voltage of the capacitor is 1 over C times the integral of I dt, right? The voltage of the inductor is L times di dt. You would say from basic um, basic element equations.
for the from the individual constitutive relations. You say therefore the voltage is equal to I times R plus one over C the integral of I dt plus L times D I D T like this. Or you could put it in in terms of the uh, uh, of the charge. You could say you could say in terms of Q or charge. Uh, you could rewrite this as V is equal to dQ dt times R plus 1 over C times Q plus L times D square Q dt square. Very good. So let's say that is my system equation. The output equation that we want was 1 over C times the integral of I dt. Th remember this is my output equation 1 over C times Q. So this is my output equation. Okay. Now we want to relate this output equation to the input equation. So we need this. That's what we need to find out. So how is this going to relate to that? It's the way it is, it's not going to relate very well, but a French mathematician Mr. Laplace introduced the so-called Laplace operator and he did a very simple um, um, simple statement that he says I'm going to call it S the, oper the mathematical operator of differentiating something and if you have for example from here if you have S of um, x x of s this means uh, that it came from d of x dt in the time domain so if you apply the Laplace operator for this and um, if if this is the case then d square x dt square should be s square times x of s. See? These two are important to remember. So if we apply it to our you know apply this concept you say concept to the two equations above okay so let's do that so if we say b of s in here is equal to dq dt is s times q of s uh, like that right plus 1 over C times Q of S plus L times S squared times Q of S like that. See? I, I apply it to this equation. I apply to this equation and came up with this. You can um, simplify this by saying that if you organize this, this would be ls squared plus 1 over uh, no plus s uh, s times r wasn't it? I think it was yeah yeah 
this time are in here so so r times s in here plus 1 over c multiplied by q of s like that so that's p of s the output equation so this is this is your system equations the output equation p sub c if we concentrate now let, let, let me put a <coughs> little frame to both of them this is the one we just did okay and now we are going to apply it to this one see the mm, okay so this is the uh, uh, in here you have 1 over c times q is the integral times q q of s let me go back to the menu here so you see you we still need to find a relationship between these two okay the best thing to do is we at this point we just create a relationship we say okay p of c over b of s like this is equal to you see this is 1 over c q of s like this and the other one is ls <coughs> square plus rs plus 1 over c right so this this goes bye bye and then of course this is equal to <coughs> the transfer function that we have we say that b of c of s is 1 over c and then here is l s square plus r s plus 1 over c like this and this thing is your transfer function in 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 MATLAB they use uh, they use it like this TF for transfer function so this 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 is what what we have concluded for this example this is the transfer function of this I think one thing that that we should um, I should emphasize is to remember in doing these things I would say remember that d dt is s and the integral dt is equal to 1 over s now you remember this is the Simulink notation, right? Remember, that's the Simulink notation. So uh, I think this is this is uh, very important to remember it when we derive it by hand. Mm -hmm. So what I have done is I have taken a uh, you know derive this by hand. I get this the transfer function in here. And then we'll uh, we uh, we found this. Yeah. Now, if we use the bond graph model, I mean to do this, we uh, 